Hello everyone and welcome back to Cobain History. Today we will be talking about arrow loops or arrow slits for my Anatomy of Castle series. Arrow loops are also known as arrow slits, loophole, archie and sometimes uh, balustraria, although balustraria usually refers to uh, it being used by a crossbow. Arrow slits allowed defenders to fire their arrows from cover and there were many different styles as illustrated here. On the inner side of the arrow slit, the walls are usually cut away in a wedge shape. This allowed the archer to have a good amount of flexibility when shooting at different angles, both vertically and horizontally. Whilst any attacking force only had a small target which they had to hit to strike the defenders. Arrow slits were angled in a way so they could provide a cover as close as possible to the foot of the wall and they achieved angles as small as 5 degrees from a vertical arrow slit in some cases. This is also why towers usually have a large quantity of arrow slits as they could provide crucial flanking fire to anyone approaching the main wall. Apart from the basic vertical slit, another common shape is a cross. This additional horizontal slit was to give the archer a better field of view so they could scope out the area before using the vertical slit to shoot their arrows through. Immediately behind the slit there was usually a recess called an embrasure. This hollowed out bay inside the thick wall allowed the defenders to get close to the arrow slit without being too cramped. Some arrow slits, such as those at Corf Castle, had lockers nearby to store spare arrows and bolts as well. These were usually located on the right hand side of the slit for ease of access and it allowed the archers to have a rapid rate of fire. Although there is some archaeological evidence to support the existence of arrow slits during the Egyptian Middle Kingdom period, the invention of arrow slits is generally attributed to Archimedes during the siege of Syracuse. These were described as being of the height of a man and about the palm's width on the outside, which allowed defenders to fire bows and scorpions from within the walls. And afterwards, arrow slits became common in the late Greek and Roman defenses. Evidence of arrow slits became scarce after the fall of Rome, and arrow slits in medieval defences were rare before the year 1190. They seem to have been only reintroduced towards the end of the 12th century in castles such as Dover and Farmlingham in England and Richard Lionheart's Chateau Gaillard in Normandy. In these early medieval examples, arrow slits were positioned to protect specific sections of the castle rather than protecting the whole perimeter of the castle. They were normally just simple vertical slots, but features like the inner wedge shape and the horizontal viewing slits developed soon after. In the 13th century, it became common for arrow slits to be placed all around the castle's defenses, and in some cases the ends of the slits became rounded as well, and these were known as uliets. In its simplest form, arrow slits were a thin vertical opening, however the different types of weapons used by defenders sometimes dictated different designs. Openings for longbowmen were usually tall and high to allow the user to fire standing up, but those for crossbowmen were usually lower down as it was easier for crossbow users to fire whilst kneeling to support the weight of the weapon. Usually the horizontal slits were placed in the middle of the vertical slit, which created a cross shape. But less common was to have the slits offset, such as in White Castle in Wales. This design provided attackers with a smaller target. However, it has also been suggested that this was done to allow the defenders of White Castle to keep the attackers in sight for longer because of the steep moat surrounding this castle. It's also possible for an arrow slit to be connected to multiple embrasures, or the other way around, an embrasure can also be linked to multiple arrow slits. A great example of this is Carnarvon Castle, and if I remember correctly there was a siege there once where there weren't that many defenders defending the castle from a larger outside force, 
and because the arrow slits and the embrasures were linked in this way, it seemed to the outside that there were a lot more archers inside the castle firing out at the enemy. When firearms and cannons became common in the late medieval and renaissance periods, fortifications had to adapt their arrow slits to accommodate these. These types of holes are known as loopholes or cannoneers, which were used to fire guns or cannons through. To prevent detection, the rifle's muzzle should not protrude through the loophole however, particularly at night, as the rifle should be fired within the wall to hide the muzzle flash. Thanks for watching, if you'd like to know more about different parts of a castle, you can find my Anatomy of Castles playlist on screen right now, or if you're interested in history as a whole, you can check out my channel to find a wider variety of topics. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, especially my $25 patrons, G. David and Parker Dye.